a nice break. Beautiful. Now the color probably will change soon. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Have you read all those books, Irmas? Sorry, I didn't catch what you just said. Have you, have you read all those books? That's a lot what? of books. <laughs> Not sure. The books behind you. Yes, I have. I am just at the moment on the third meter and <laughs> meter. counting. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys, uh, there's 15. 16 participants, but I think it's it's time to start because we have a schedule to, to follow. As you know, this is part of the Euphra World Day and they have all these events uh, synchronized. So uh, I'm sure more people will will enter the, the meeting as we as we start. So I wanted to, to start by saying hello to everybody. And this is the 30th anniversary webinar um, and also the fifth webinar of the Ufru Landscape Ecology Working Party. And as I said before, part of the Ufru World Day. It's really great to have you here. I haven't seen most of you for, for a while. And it's, you know, we live uh, difficult times, but we are hoping that in the next year or so we can meet physically again. Um, but until then, we have these alternatives which work fine and are great ways of uh, maintaining the, the connectivity within, within the group. So I would like to thank you all for being here, in particular the historical members of our working party, those that contributed to the establishment and also for the development of the working party to the present day. And it's due to their work, to their commitment that we are celebrating 30 years of existence of the, the working party. Um, this is a very informal event. Uh, we wanted, that's why we are doing it as a, a Zoom meeting because we want everybody to participate and have their sayings about uh, what has happened and what will happen in, in the future in, within the, the working party. Uh, although um, it's informal, there's a, some sort of structure in the webinar. I'll start with a short presentation based on slides provided by Ji Quan Shen and also uh, other members of our community just to, to share some facts about the past and some historical moments and some um, um, strategy that has been followed by, by the working party over, over the years. After that, we will award uh, exceptional members of our community mm. with the certificates of appreciation of UFRU. Uh, following, followed by video, short videos for, from our members and participation from the audience. That's when everybody can participate and share stories and memories and anecdotes or anything they want to share with, with us. Um, we'll have also the participation of our regional coordinators that will present themselves for those who don't know them. They, I mean, I'm sure all of us know most of them, but in case you don't know them, uh, it's one opportunity to, to know them. And finally, we will have short videos and presentations about tree plantation in, in two parts of, of the world. So this is the, the plan. Uh, I'll start then with the, the presentation of, of slides that I will share with you in a sec. There it is. Can you see? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. So this is um, just a, a short summary of what we have been doing over the last 30 years. When I say we, I mean the, the entire group. I'm not in the group uh, from the very beginning. Uh, Jiquan is almost from the very beginning, but even 
Czech one is, is not. So I'll, I'll try to cover some of, of the not many, well, some of the, the milestones and major um, strategic um, lines followed by, by the group over, over two years. Just this takes a few seconds to start running. Okay. Okay, there we go. Okay, so the the group was well it's not certain when exactly the group was established. These are the, the facts, the historical facts that it started in the late 80s. There was a conference in 1990. Uh, it's uh, certain that Tom Crow and Bossian Anko started it in, in, in the late 80s and they were responsible for managing the group for several years, Tom Crow for almost 20 years. It started as the S10105 group within UFRU, and today is, is the Unit 1812 part of the forest ecosystem functions uh, and under the forest environment division, which is led by, by Sandra, Sandra Luke. So, this is where we are located within UFRU. It's a unit, it's a one more unit, but it seems it's a special unit in terms of the activity that we have been able to, to maintain. Uh, over the years, several leaders were responsible for the, the group. It started, as I said before, with Tom Crow and Bastian Anko. Tom Crow is from the United States of America. Bastian Anko is, is from Slovenia. So from the very beginning of the group, there were two different schools, two different backgrounds of landscape ecology uh, supporting the development of, of the group. And I think that's important for the success of what has happened in the, the, in the last 30 years. Uh, Ji Kwan Shen joined uh, Tom Crow in 1999 uh, in, the, um, in the, the leadership of the group. Um, they established a regional committee in 2004, as we still have it today. In 2007, Sandra Luque and Rafaela Forteza, they established uh, a working party with YALE. It's the UFRO uh, Landscape Ecology YALE working party that is still active and which is maintained by um, um, from our, our, our group. That I'll mention that later on. Um, in 2008, the group was led by Ji Kwan Shen with Sandra Luque. Rafaela Fortes and Najib Pereira as, as deputies, uh, expanding the regional uh, structure. Uh, Sandra Luke took over in 2013 with Kurt Ritter, Santiago Saura, Ji Kwan Shen, Linding Shen, and Christian Echeverria as, as deputies. And more recently, I became the chair, first with Sandra and Louise Iverson, and more recently with the team that I will present in a few slides. And uh, Jiquan pointed out that Tom Crow, um, the founder and chair of the working group for almost 20 years, deserved the most credit for the success of our program. Um, but also Bastian Anko should be paid tribute too, since he was one of, of the, the beginners of the group. And he was extremely active in the first years of the, the working party. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2013, but we wanted to pay tribute to him in this, this presentation. So this is the current structure of the working party. I'm, I'm leading it uh, with Pele Fan and Titu Gobi as deputies. And we, are, we created a, this new position, the junior deputy, that is held by Maria Meza with the, the purpose of um, connecting with, with youth, with uh, students and young 
researchers, which is the major role of, of Maria. This is the regional uh, structure that I mentioned before. Uh, we have regional representatives and coordinators in six regions in the world, Pinar in, in Europe, uh, Keming Mai in China, Cinnamon, Dobbs and Sonia Ribeiro in Latin America, they share the coordination. Toshia Matsuda in Japan and Oceania, Kevin Potter in North America, and Syed Rahman in South and Southeast Asia. And we have two um, thematic coordinators for very specific topics, such as the Yale Eufro Working Party, which is under the responsibility of Pele Fan, and Urban Forestry under Giovanni Sanesi. Urban Forestry is, is an important group and an important field within our working party. This is uh, the earliest known document produced within the activity of the working party. It's the proceedings of the UFRO Working Party Landscape Ecology Conference in Slovenia in 1993. Uh, this was published by the Department of Forestry of the University of Ljubljana. And this was right after the independence of Slovenia from Yugoslavia. It was edited by Bastian Hanko. Uh, it's interesting to see, to see in particular the preface where there's some historical information like the, the number of participants in this event, which was of 40. Um, the group as we know it today was basically defined in the Tsukuba meeting uh, in, in Japan in 2000. For. And these are some relevant actors in, in the process. Uh, Tom Crow, uh, Ken Sugimura, Rafaela Fortes and Jiquan Shen, and with others, they, they shaped the working party as we know, know it today. And this, these were the visionary points that were discussed and approved and followed after, afterward uh, within the group. Uh, the first one was organizing biannual meetings in different regions, which has been done since then, uh, even before. Keeping the meetings small to assure good communication, which has also been met. So the, 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 the meetings have expanded in size, but they are still small enough to assure good communication among all. Promoting professional collaborations, uh, which happens all the time, more when we meet physically and we, we have dinner or lunch or, or coffee together and we plan uh, future collaborations in, in publications or in projects or in exchange of students or whatever. Building a strong social network, which is key and basic for all the objectives and, um, um, and targets of, of the group. Formalizing leadership structure, including deputies and regional coordinators, which we applied and we follow to the present day. Supporting students as our priority, which is also a key, a, a key issue of our activities, in particular the, the conferences that we organize, where we try to, to bring students and young researchers in particular from developing countries and aiming at outcomes such as publications of different sorts that I will mention lately, um, later. Um, so this is the, the several international conferences that we have organized over the year, the years. Um, there's a total number of 12 conferences already organized, uh, six in Europe, three in North America, two in Asia and one in South America. These are the conferences that the group organizes with, of course, local organizers, but that are also part or involved in some, in some ways within, within the group. And as you see, there's a huge diversity of um, geographies where we have organized our, our events. There's also many, many events that we helped organize or we contributed to, the, to, the, to its organization. Uh, either symposia at the, the UFRA World Congress or regional um, conferences or conferences organized by other um, societies or organizations that uh, ask for our participation. So there's, there has been a, a very active 
role of, of the group also in organizing events, not just our own events, but also events with other institutions. And over the years, we have also, besides expanding our scientific knowledge, we have also expanded our knowledge about different cultures, about uh, different heritage, different traditions, different um, religions, the diversity of um, peoples in the world, and, and especially how they relate with nature and how that relationship shapes landscapes. Uh, professional collaborations, as I mentioned before, uh, happen. We don't know exactly how many collaborations happen at this level. We know that there, there are many. We just we are illustrating this with a Skype uh, chat between Sandra and Jiquan, where they they plan a conference and at the same time they plan um, a possible funded project in in the future. But all of these and the the things that I will present afterwards are based on a very strong social network, which has been an important role of the, the working party. Through our activities, in particular, uh, field trips and post-conference tours and the events themselves, coffee breaks and dinners and all the social events of our conferences have, have helped to, to create this very strong social network. Uh, which has in part been responsible for the longevity of, of the group. You can see in these pictures in different conferences in different parts of the world that you see often the, the same faces because many of them, they are friends. I have friends in, in this group that I have um, from the very beginning of my participation in these events and in the activities. Of, of the group. And this social network is key to create trust and to establish all the other outcomes and collaborations that we can imagine within the group. And actually, this is possibly one of the, the most important objectives of, of the working parties to create these social networks that can support other, other outcomes and other, other results. Of course, Food and drink helps a lot to, to create these this social uh, networks. Um, students are part of our priorities. Um, we, in some events, we are able to, to, to fund traveling and participation registration of students from developing countries. Uh, but even when we we don't do that. We are able to support them in different ways and trying to attract them. In particular now with Maria Meza uh, in this role of junior deputy, trying to attract more and more students and young researchers to renovate the group. And finally, the outcomes, uh, we are also very productive. We are good in, in, in social uh, relationships, but we are also very strong in, in you know, uh, outcomes, publications, books, uh, editorial special issues and, and paper, uh, journal papers. And these are some examples. The, there's a, a, a series of books that we have been edited uh, for some years now. This, this one on the left is the latest one, Ecosystem Services from Forest Landscapes edited by Ajit Pereira, Urmos Peterson, Guillermo Martinez, Pastur, and Luis Iverson. Some of them are here. And this is the latest product that we, uh, that we, we created within the group, the webinars. We started these webinars in June 2020 with the first one, of course, dedicated to the role of landscape ecology and the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, followed by a webinar on urban green infrastructure, also radioactive contamination in Fukushima and Chernobyl. And this, this is the latest landscape ecology in the UN decade of ecosystem restoration. All this information and much more is available from our website uh, in this address here in this, in this slide that you are always welcome to, to visit. So this is the the short presentation that 
I I prepared for this event, uh, supported or using slides from from Jiquan mostly. Um, as you saw, there's many many people in the group that made all these things that I've shown possible. Hundreds and hundreds of participants and editors and members of scientific commissions, members of organizing commissions, uh, field trip guides, all and participants, and they are all extremely important for us. However, there's a few that are even more, more relevant for the, the group than, than these. And these ones we we decided to award award them with this certificate of appreciation from from UFRU. Uh, I'm I think you can see my slide now. Um, these are the awardees that the working party decided to to award with this certificate uh, due to their outstanding contribution to the establishment and development of the, the working party. Uh, some of them are here, some, some of them are not. Some sent um, short videos that I'll show in, in a second, uh, but I'd like to mention all of them. Uh, Ajit Pereira, Christian Furst, Christian Echeverria, Dolores Armenteras, Giovanni Sanesi, Guillermo Pastur, Chico and Shen, Ken Sugimura, Kurt Ritters, uh, Leading Chen, Louis Iverson, Rafael La Forteza, Sandra Luque, Santiago Saura, Tom Crow, and Urmas Peterson. Um, thank you very much for your contributions. It's due to your effort that we are here celebrating this 30 year anniversary of, of the working party. Uh, it's, and I'm, I'm, I feel truly honored to, to be able to offer you these, these awards. I should mention that uh, all, all of the awardees received their certificate of appreciation that looks uh, like this. This is the certificate of Tom Crow, who cannot be, be here. But it's, it's, it's a simple, for, from us, a simple uh, recognition of their effort. It's an important um, uh, award from, from UFRO. It's signed by the president, John Parota, and it's one of the highest uh, levels of recognition within the, the organization. So this is a very simple um, sign of appreciation from, from our side. I don't know if any of you awardees want to mention anything about this. I know that some of you did that with videos that I'll show after this, this section, but um, any of you want to say a few words? Can I pick? Uh, Luis, you are one of the first in my, in my list. Okay. Well, it's a real honor to be selected for this. I, I think you know, the key things that I, I remember from the working party are, like you said, the publications, the enormous publication, you know, these books and such that have just been making a big impression. And the, the meetings, I, I only got to go to four meetings, but they're very memorable. And, you know, the, the field trips that were with them were just amazing. So I, I really appreciated my opportunities to be part of the working group. Okay, thank you. Christian, uh, you are about to leave one short message, perhaps? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Joel. Thank you. Great to see you all. I am in the middle of the teaching session now here at the university. I have a student waiting for me there. So thank you for, very much for this opportunity and for the recognition. And I hope to see you again, maybe in the, I don't know, the next, for the next event. I don't know yeah, where. So. I, have, I have seen that maybe we need to have another South American meeting had just one in the entire, you know, group. Mm -hmm. So maybe the next time had to be maybe in South America. Okay, this this message was for the regional representatives <laughs> as well. <laughs> okay, thank you, Chris. Colombia, maybe. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so, Urmas.
Do you want to share something with us? Yeah, thanks for uh, the award and thanks for asking me. I guess I have not much to say, but we made a meeting in Estonia in Tartu. It was six years ago. And for the success, I would say success, for the success of this meeting, I had a wild card, a wild card from Ajit Pereira. You can ask me anything. And so I asked him to chair the scientific committee. And I asked two very important persons, Louis and you, Joao, what about Ajit? And the answer was, go ahead. <laughs> so, not much to tell about this thing, but we had joy there, yeah. you to remember. Very well. Thanks. Okay. Thank that you. Was a, that Estonia trip was really a highlight in my career, three days of listening to Ermus and, uh, and his colleagues just telling stuff the whole day long on the bus, whenever we traveled. <laughs> we learned so much about Estonia. Now, now, Louis, you are, you are missing. It was Ulomander, you know. You all tried to find the record, how many seconds he could be silent. And you invented it was 17, <laughs> not more. 17, that's right, 17. <laughs> It was you who started to count the, the seconds. Okay. Well, thanks, Louis. Okay. Thank you, guys. Uh, Ken, we can see you. Hello. Hi, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, uh, very nice meeting. Yeah. I did enjoy you know, every time I attended the, you know, participated the conference. Yeah. I enjoyed very much so yeah i'm afraid you know this is after midnight <laughs> so my yeah, brain doesn't work very that. much you know, yeah yeah but i i i do appreciate your yeah great efforts yeah thank you very much thank you and sandra i think you are last yes. but not the least <laughs> thank you joao first at all for organizing this this event this is really really fantastic that that you did that and bring uh, all these nice memories, as I said in the video I sent to you, this for me has been always uh, a family. So I joined this group 15 years ago, exactly, I said, because it was in, in September 2006. So, of course, a lot of memories, a lot of uh, um, great experience shared in these nice trips and, and, and also uh, the hard work through publications and brainstormings. So anyway, thanks for, for awarding me, <laughs> that's great. But uh, thanks to you uh, and the whole family for make this group what it is. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sandra. Yeah, that's true, Dolores is here. I'm sorry, Dolores, I, I didn't notice. Dolores is also a awardee for a role in, in the group, particularly in South America. Hello, how are you? Hello, I'm actually here with Maria. She's also here. Oh, she looks well, like a ghost. <laughs> yeah, well, we're in, in a small office. So, um, no, thank you. It, it has been a, a pleasure to be part of this, of, of this group. I have um, hopefully contributed a little bit. I was looking back at when I joined and I want to say I thank Sandra particularly because she was the one that brought me in 2012 as a local representative of Northern of South America at the beginning. And then I, I, I was uh, for a while um, coordinator of uh, representative of Latin America and coordinated, coordinator of the Euphra Yale. So it's been, a, it's been a journey actually looking back, not so back as old, not as old as the, the working party, but quite a few years. So it was interesting to, to, to recall that. Um, yeah, I really hope that we were able to, to catalyze somehow the, the group in Latin America. I think if, if you look at the figures, probably it, it, it was a, 
um, going up and, and bringing young people, including Maria. And hopefully we sort of like help also a little bit uh, on, on gender and geographical balance, which I still think that it needs to be um, worked a lot more uh, for the future. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy and I'll be helping the group, even if I'm not uh, officially representing, but uh, we will be working on this multicultural challenge that is to work in this type of uh, working party. So anyway, thanks for the, for the certificate of appreciation and yeah. And nice to see old faces and new faces as well. Okay, thank you, Zola. And uh, so now let's watch the mo movies or the videos that our members sent us. It's a collection of six short videos that I will share with you from now. Um, okay, starting with Jiquan. I'm Jiquan Chen. I'm a professor at Michigan State University. I served as the master and co-chair during 1994 and 2005 with Dr. Tom Crow and became the chair in 2005 until 2013 when Dr. Sandra Loki took over the leadership. Here, I use five slides to answer the five corresponding questions. First one, how would you summarize the past 30 years of the working party? The working party has evolved from a few people in the 1990s to a well-organized professional organization. Our earlier activities were mostly from a small handful of people with our annual meetings supported by a few labs. Today, the working party is organized with the regional coordinators and the deputies. It is well recognized by other professional organizations such as IALI. And it is probably the most influential working party within the IUFRO. For example, our annual meetings have hundreds of participants and presentations. This is very different from the 1990s when the only three to four labs and less than 20 local people were, were in the room. The second question is about my memories. Well, it is about the people and the friendship that will stay in my memory forever. As you can see from these historical photos, I enlarged my professional network, and more importantly, I established strong and lasting friendship in many countries. This is done not only through presentations at our meetings, but also through many social events, after meeting interactions, and the joint actions for education and the research. Being a member is simply fun and exciting. Next question is about the top three topics for landscape ecology by our members. Indeed, there are many topics that our members have pr promoted, yet I provide my view of the top three achievements. The first one is that we defined and developed many measures and the tools on landscape structure such as the Beatles by Dr. Peter Vogt, who is a very active member of our party. Secondly, we provided rich evidence for managing resources at the landscape level. Lastly, we enforced the importance of spatial heterogeneity and a temporal change of the landscapes, as well as their dependency on scale. Next question, is about the future. In my review view, I think we moved away from patterns to processes. With the increasing spatial data and a technology advancement, landscape ecologists will have opportunities to focus on the processes at multiple scales. This will be a shift 
from pattern analysis within GIS and the models that focus on the structure and or structural changes of landscapes. In another word, we will shift our efforts from what to so what and why. A particular movement will be on the material and energy cycles across landscapes. This shift will facilitate better connections and interactions with ecosystem ecologists. The last question is about the contributions of landscape ecology. To me, we've broadened view of scientists, resource managers, and policy makers to larger spatial scale. Today, we no longer manage the ecosystem at a stand level. Instead, we pay particular attention to the complex, to the complex formation and interactions of multiple ecosystems. This impact is evidence from our past products, such as published special issues and edited books. Thank you again and wish the best for Landscape Ecology Working Party for her bright future. It is a great, great honor for me to receive the Certificate of Appreciation from UFRO. Over the last 30 years, the Landscape Ecology Working Group has broadened his horizon of research and practice. The concept of landscape has evolved. It is no longer seen only as a geographical area covered by ecosystems, but is perceived as a couple human nature system with dynamic interrelationships. In the next 30 years, issues and questions related to sustainability, resilience and restoration of landscape in a context of global social ecological changes will be relevant for landscape ecology practice and research. We need to better understand the relationship between biodiversity, ecosystem services and human well-being. But we also need to move towards greater integration of natural and social science approaches and concepts. Thank you, thank you very much for this recognition. And I have no doubt that the Landscape Ecology Working Group will continue to play a key role in the conservation and sustainability of the world's forests. Hello, this is Ken Sukimura. Every memory belongs to my best, but if I should select a few, first meeting Bostian Anko in Slovenia and Tom Crow in Minnesota. They were founders of our group. Second, Tsukuba Conference. Third, my last participation in Halle, Germany. I first met Bostian in 1995. He showed me unique landscapes of Slovenia and let me have a clear idea of how to recognize a landscape unit. When I had an opportunity to visit some countries in Europe, I asked him if I could see him again. He welcomed me very warmly. Then after I came back from the trip, he asked me to join the working party and hold the first international conference of UFRO Landscape Ecology in Asia. I accepted Bostian's proposal, but I did not have a clear idea image of the meeting. Then I decided to plan a trip to Minnesota. Tom later told me that only a small number of people visited his laboratory, and I was one of those people. This is the early history of our conference. There were three small meetings before Tsukuba. After the Tsukuba meeting, I received very kind words from Jiquan Chen, praising its success. We were able to 
invite and welcome scientists from many countries. We had a wide range of topics in the presentation. I do appreciate Toshio Matsura for agreeing to attend a meeting with me in Hale and accepting my offer to take over the position. Now I'm sure he's been working harder than I did. Significant changes over the 30 years. These changes are obvious, more integrated with team members from a variety of disciplines. Most relevant topics I expect in the future. In many cases, policymakers do not have, do not have a good understanding of the natural sciences. So I think natural scientists should be more enthusiastic about policy making. Finally, I would like to promote a recently published book. It covers the topics I presented at the conferences. Chapter two in Tsukuba, three in Hale. Chapter 4 in Braganza, 5 in Bali, Chapter 6 in Estonia. The group size is just right to keep intimate relationships. It has maintained a high level of academic quality. I did enjoy joining the working party. Thank you very much. Well, hi, I really appreciate this certificate of appreciation. And I, I chose to talk today about some of the trends in the technology and data tools that have happened since the early days of my career, starting in about 1981. It's already 40 years. So in 1982, I was hired by the Illinois Natural History Survey to work with this new technology called GIS. They thought it might be appropriate to do analysis of multiple map features. And it was an experiment for them. They hired scientists for this GIS rather than computer people. ESRI was hired to help us get started at the Illinois Natural History Survey, and we became the 12th client. And we learned on ARC Info 2.1. The ESRI president, Jack Dangerman, he would take us on little trips during breaks to the orange orchard on the property to pick a few oranges. And this property, of course, is now full of buildings. Subsequently, Illinois was the first state with a full integrated vector GIS at one to 500,000 scale. And prior to this time, most of GIS work was performed with raster processing. And they used paper printouts with different symbols for different classes within the matrix. And so they'd often plaster an entire wall with these printouts to get an overall view of some of the study areas. It was amazing, but it worked. It didn't have huge study areas, however. Now, ARC Info 2.1 was vector, but the hardware and software that we had available was very limited in power at that time in the early 1980s for data. We had a statewide digitized map of the pre-European colonization or the pre-European settlement vegetation and the land use data from the U.S. Geological Survey, which was vintage about late 1970s. So these were digitized by ESRI for us and integrated together. And then with these, we could assess long-term vegetation changes and the attributes related to these landscapes. There are some papers on that. At that time, a simple overlay process could run all night. In fact, my colleagues forbade me for, to run these overlay batch jobs during the day because we had a shared computer system. 
and this computer system filled an entire room pretty much, but it would slow to a crawl or a crash with more than just a few jobs running at the same time. So I had to do my jobs mostly overnight. I divided the state into many chunks then it could uh, because the software couldn't handle so many arcs. Other characteristics of that time include, you know, an absence of any disk larger than about 300 megabytes. I remember our 300 megabyte uh, disk drives were about the size of a washing machine. And that, you know, we thought those are pretty big at the time. Nine track tapes were the main means of data dispersal and backup. Uh, there was no internet, no email. And then in, with remote sensing, there was no spot, MODIS, radar, or any other satellite other than Landsat MSS with an 80 meter resolution. And then the beginning of an experimental phase of Landsat TM and AVHR, which is the advanced very high resolution radiometer. So I was privileged to be an early NASA principal investigator to assess some spatial, spatial trends with forest plot data and thematic mapper 30 meter data, which were then used to calibrate one kilometer AVHRR data that we could then use to extrapolate forest cover and productivity over larger areas like the size of a state. But that was, uh, pretty uh, progressive action using three levels of data and overlaying them. Most times I could only analyze about 512 by 512 pixels at a time. And so these were just used as samples for the extrapolation that we used. With respect to GPS, you know, civilian GPS units first became available to the non-military people in the late 1980s. And there were a few satellites and a few base stations, but very few. And so we only had a few hours of sufficient satellites up in the sky per day. And we had to do this differential post-processing from a station which located more than 200 kilometers away. So the data were not that accurate. And then with selective availability, the data were automatically scrambled by the uh, Department of Defense, where the data from the satellites were scrambled to a rather coarse resolution of about, I think, 70 meters. And that was the norm until uh, May of 2000. So you had to do post-processing to get any closer than that. Uh, spatially explicit simulation models began to emerge in the later 1980s as well. There were some habitat suitability models before that, but as far as simulation, computer simulations, uh, they started in the later 80s. So we have indeed come a long ways in developing the toolbox for landscape ecology studies. And I've been so fortunate to be a part of this fast trajectory over the past four decades. I know these technology will, technologies will continue to develop in the future, and we are indeed in exciting times for the landscape ecology field and for the landscape ecologists per se. However, these are also very trying times for our globe as we all know, and landscape ecologists have a pivotal role to play in helping the entire world move into a more sustainable and enduring planet. So I wanna wish you all the best uh, in these endeavors as we work into the future to help solve some of these issues. And again, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here and to um, get this award from my UFRO. I appreciate that. Thank you. Hello, I'm Toshia Matsura in Forestry and Forest Products Research Institute, Japan. Today, I'd like to celebrate the 30th anniversary of UFRO Landscape Ecology Working Party. I'm a regional representative of Japan and Oceania in this working party, taking over the role in 2019 from Ken, who has continuously contributed to our working party long years from the late 1990s. I will briefly answer the question of what topics do you expect to become the most relevant in the coming 30 years in forest landscape ecology? My answer is mixed effects of demographic and climate changes. Population increase in some regions 
whereas depopulation and aging in other regions such as Japan. This depopulation trend requires low-cost forest monitoring and management, conservation of local ecological knowledge and culture for sustaining ecosystem services, particularly in remote areas, and increasing needs of human health and well-being in the green landscapes. For climate change, management and mitigation of natural hazards such as flooding as well as conserving biodiversity is an important issue. Additionally, it is also essential to mitigate the conflict of renewable power generation developments such as solar, wind, and biomass power stations in forest landscapes. Lastly, I will show you some photos, mostly I got from Ken, on previous conferences in Ufuru Landscape Ecology Working Party. I hope our working party will continue free progress in the broad field of sustainable landscape management. Thank you very much. Recording is on. Hi, everybody. It's a great pleasure for me to be sharing this 30 years anniversary of the group. And I want to deeply thank Joao for organizing this. So I'm Sandra Luque. I was former chair of this group before I handled to Joao to continue this um, job that he's doing in an incredible, incredible manner. So um, for me, it's uh, actually my 15 years anniversary since I joined the group in September 2006 in what we call the Bari Conference that was in Loco Rotondo, fantastic event. And since then, I've been in this family, really, learning so, so much. And I remember one of my first actions was uh, in 2007, actually, when we worked together with Rafael La Forteza, Thomas Crown, Ji Wan Chen, to put together a YALE, UFRO Landscape Ecology Group. So the idea was to join forces, both communities, for everybody in the world interested and in working in forested landscapes. And I think this was um, a very important uh, step forward in order to enlarge the family, in order to become uh, very interdisciplinary, and I must say also transdisciplinary, considering all uh, the people that, that are in this group and they are sharing experience. So um, what can I say about this group? For me, it's been, it's been really a roller coaster. It's been accelerating. It's been a fantastic experience, um, an incredible learning experience. So I hope to continue working with, with everybody. And, and we hope we'll go back to normal again and we can continue uh, traveling the world, getting to know incredible landscapes, learning and sharing. So thank you, Joao, again for organizing this and happy birthday to all of, to all of you, to the family for many, many years more. So thank you. I hope to see uh, all of you very, very soon. Hello. Okay, it was a very nice sequence of, of videos. Um, thank you all for sending them. Our initial plan was to have several videos from which to extract some small segments to, to prepare a final and general video for the, the 30 year celebration. We got some of the videos only yesterday, so we didn't have time to do the editing that we planned. But we, we, we hope to do that in the coming days or week. And so th this video, and possibly I have to talk with the, the, the authors of every single video, all, all of them will be available. Yeah, really, really interesting. That was to to know about the, the past, but also to to identify you know key topics that our members consider that are essential in terms of research for for the future. And there were five questions that we sent to all the members of the group uh, that can 
I mean, could be used to, to guide answers. And also some of you actually follow them in, in the videos, which is really nice and gives us some valuable information. We also had in parallel a survey uh, that some of you answered to, but the, the level of responses was so low that the results cannot be considered significant. So we'll keep the survey open until, because our plan was to, to show results today, but uh, since we had only a few answers, we will extend the, the period of the survey and hope, hopefully during the, the next month or so, we, we have more results that we can use to, to extract information that is useful for, for the strategy of, of the group. Um, I don't know, there's more people here in the, the meeting that didn't talk yet. So um, is there anything? I mean, I, I'm hoping that you make some contributions to this topic. I hope you all reply to the survey. The, the address is available in the emails that I sent. Um, but is there any uh, contribution to these topics or other topics that you want to make? And now we open this section of, you know, participation from the, the audience in, in general. Um, I don't know, maybe our deputies, Pele and Tito, want to, to mention something? Um. I would just say that all these uh, very memorable photos um, uh, really brought me back to those uh, trips uh, um, and uh, uh, the interpersonal meetings uh, that uh, I have joined. Um, this is a really great fun moment. Uh, and I also really appreciate um, all these, uh, our four founders um, and uh, officers, uh, your hard work to make um, this uh, working party a very successful one um, within IU for all. Um, it is your um, great work that build a great foundation um, for uh, us to move forward. Um, and uh, I think this working party uh, under the leadership of <laughs> Jaw will be, um, uh, will be keep making progress. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. You are you are part of the of the team of the coordinator coordination team as well. Same with with Tito. Yeah, uh, it's uh, for me. It's a great honor to be part of this uh, of this group. There is such a rich uh, history for the group in terms of uh, advances and and development. And it's like uh, I feel like uh, Sandra in the sense that I'm I'm part of the of the family. I'm, uh, I'm in a sense, I mean, uh, I arrived uh, a few years ago, but really I, I feel like a part of the, of the family. It's a really great honor to be part of, of this family. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tito. Um, what I had planned next was the, some, very short presentations from our regional coordinators. Is it okay? Uh, like Sonia, do you, want, do you want to start from South America? Sonia is kind of new in, in the position, although she's not new within the group. She has participated in like in the conference in Bragasa in 2010. She has been around. Yes, thank you very much, Juan. It's my pleasure. To, to be part of this this group, you know, I uh, I was inspired uh, from you guys, you know, as a, a student in forestry science and your um, Sandra, uh, Louise, uh, Sujimura, all of you inspired uh, my generation of, of um, uh, researchers in forestry and, and give us the strength to do, you know, uh, research in landscape ecology, uh, bridging forests and people. I'm, uh, um, I recently assumed this, this um, position with uh, Cinnamon um, as co-coordinator of Latin America. And uh, it will be my pleasure to be uh, involved uh, on, 
on this uh, on this work. So far, I've been working mostly in the in bridging the Portuguese landscape ecology uh, organizations here in Brazil and uh, and from Portugal. We recently uh, have a uh, joint effort and we published a, a landscape ecology book in Portuguese because we felt the need to have to have it uh, written down in Portuguese. Uh, but I'm looking forward to contribute to this group. And thank you very much for being uh, inspiring us. Uh, thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Sonia. Uh, Toshia, do you, wanna, you, you always, you, I mean, you, you have already uh, made a video, but do you want to say something else to the you know, participants from your region, the few? Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I already put in the <laughs> video, but uh, uh, today I, I my a few uh, friends from Japan also joining this uh, webinar. So uh, I hope uh, to uh, extend uh, this network to be uh, uh, active more. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Sied. Um... Do you want to, to I mean, you have been around for, for some time, so most people know you, but still, do you want to thank present you. yourself? Yeah, uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm here with this family uh, proudly from since 2008. Uh, Professor Jiquan Chen first time brought me here, so I'm really grateful to him since Chengdu meeting. And currently, I'm working with Peking University, uh, the Institute of Forest Ecology. It's really very much, every time I feel like, oh, I'm also with IFRO lens ecology and I'm now forest ecology. That's what actually my research focus on agroforestry, forest management and lens, uh, landscape approach. So what I, I was doing here for this group, uh, proudly uh, I'm, uh, as the representative of South and Southeast Asian continent is I was, communicating with the university professionals, government officers, uh, uh, in line with the landscape ecology. Uh, two years ago, I have donated some books to one of the universities in Bangladesh. Also last couple of months, I was, you can also say me like I'm a tree hugger, I love trees. So also, uh, I was motivating people, my friends, colleagues, NGO workers uh, to plant trees. And so I got some success. Uh, one of my friends, two friends from Bangladesh, they have planted lots of trees and they, even they spent money from their pocket. So I was feeling, oh, really, that is very good. So um, at last but not the least, I'm really very much uh, happy and it's my pleasure to be landscape ecology uh, uh, group. And this is, I, I feel that this is one of the most active groups within uh, IFRO. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you, Siad. Uh, Kevin, Kevin has, has been around in the group for, for many years, but he, he recently took over the position of North America. Uh, representative. Hello, Kevin. Hello. So, yes, those are big shoes to fill, and uh, I'll do my best, <laughs> Lewis, but I don't know how well I can I can fill those shoes. But uh, I will say I've been uh, I've been around, uh, and I've been to two uh, of the meetings: the one in Bagansa and the one in uh, Tartu, which were among the the uh, best meetings I think I've been to. And I'm looking forward to more. One of the, the most challenging aspects of the, the coronavirus uh, times in which we live is that we can't go and be with people and uh, be together as, as scientists and people. And I'm looking forward to going back to that again. Uh, and in a, in a more general sense, I think as landscape ecologists, we have a lot to offer the world. Uh, we have a way of thinking that I think is very important as we address the, the many problems that our world faces in terms of how we manage our, our natural resources and our human resources. 
any interaction of those two things. So uh, I encourage all of you to stay the course and to uh, continue to do good work and to uh, make the world a, a better place. I'm looking forward to uh, uh, future meetings, hopefully in person. Okay, thank you. And um, last but not least, Pinar from Europe. Hello, Pinar. Hello, Joe. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, yeah, happy to see you here. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm Pinar from Chalbers and uh, yeah, working as a um, as an advisor uh, in an NGO in Turkey. And uh, yeah, I have been uh, with this group uh, since 2014. And uh, since 2018, uh, I have been the regional coordinator for Europe. So, yeah, we organized, we have organized uh, many conferences, webinars together already, and uh, we have published uh, one editorial. It is, uh, I, 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 I was involved. Uh, uh, I, I involved in uh, this public publication. Uh, yeah, uh, if you have any question uh, about. Um, our working group uh, for Europe or uh, yeah, in part of um, world, please uh, check our website so you can easily find, uh, all, find all our uh, contact details. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you, Pina. Um, so the last session section that we had planned for this webinar was uh, about tree plantation. Siad already mentioned the, the work that he has, he has done in planting trees because we, we decided that it would be uh, a significant and um, relevant uh, celebration to plant trees um, in this 30th, 30th anniversary. So we were able to do that in, in Asia and in Japan. We have a short video that Toshia prepared about that, she had already mentioned the effort his colleagues made to have this plant planted. So maybe we should go to the to the video and share the experience in in Japan. I'm Toshia Matsura, a regional representative of Japan and Oceania in Yufuro Landscape Ecology Working Party. For celebrating 30th anniversary of a working party in Japan, we conducted a tree planting event in Tohoku Research Center in Forestry and Forest Product Research Institute in Northeastern Japan on September 21st, 2021. We planted two tree species of Prunus grayana and Theopis labrata. Prunus grayana, in Japanese Wamizuzakura, it's Japanese bird cherry, which is distributed in Japan and its family is widely distributed in Eurasia. The inflorescences and fruit of this tree are partly used as edible wild plants in some regions in Japan. This tree was thought to be used in fortune-telling ceremony in ancient Japan. The opposite to Abrata, Hinoki Asnaro or Hiba in Japanese is a tall evergreen coniferous tree species which belongs to the cypress family and is endemically distributed in cool temple region in Japanese archipelago. The lumber of this tree is highly water resistant and durable. Special thanks to Dr. Takashi Yamanaka, Director General, and our colleagues in Tohoku Research Center, EHPR Japan, for this tree planting. Thank you very much. Okay, very nice. Thank you, Toshia. And thank you also, Sied. Sied, he has pictures and a short report about the tree plantation, but that was not possible to present here today. Um, but anyway, there's two, in two places in the world, there's trees that were planted in 2021 uh, to celebrate the 30th anniversary of, of the working party, the Youth for Landscape Ecology Working Party. So this is all we had planned for, for today. Uh, I was expecting more people and more contributions and more stories, anecdotes and memories. Um, 
we are, I think the maximum number of participants in the meeting were 21. Of course, there's the people that are watching this session from, from YouTube uh, and in the, in the platform of, of Ufru. Um, but I was expecting more people participating effectively in the meeting so we could share more you know, histories of, of the past and more experiences. Um, so, but we, we still have um, some minutes if you want to, to address any particular topic, especially about the future. I just have a, a few words to, to finish the, the session uh, after you, after your, your contribution. If any. Yeah, perhaps uh, um, I think something that is missing is the plan for next meeting. So hopefully, perhaps from next year, we'll be able to get at least a hybrid or a face-to-face -face meeting. Um, so from Division 8, where this group is part of, um, we decided that within the UFRO Regional Conference in Russia, that will be in Moscow, we'll have a one day for our Division 8. So this will be, of course, an opportunity to, to have something from this group. But um, I hope from there, and perhaps this, uh, this conference, if, if at the end will take place, we hope that we'll be all able to be there, uh, will be an opportunity to, to, to discuss and think which will be the next plan for the next big conference of, of the group, um, hopefully um, in, in one country in the South, we'll see. So, so I think this is something that we need to think about where, when and where the next conference will be. Hopefully we can start making plans next year as the situation continue stabilizing as, as, the, as seems to be the way now. But just to confirm yeah. that the Russia conference yeah. is more likely to happen, so. Yeah, that's good to know. Uh, this, this topic, we have been discussing it for the last two years or, or more. Um, because as you saw in my presentation, everything we do depends upon physical meetings. We can, you know, find alternatives like webinars, but it's not the same and it doesn't have the same impact. It doesn't have the same type and level of outcomes. Therefore, we need to meet again and we need to decide where to, to organize the next meeting. And it has been very difficult to plan for the future, given the uncertainty related to the, the pandemic. But there's good signs that uh, things are improving, at least in, in part of the world. It's, it's unfair, but uh, at least in part of the world, things are, are improving. So let's see. Let's wait and see what we can do. But this Russia, Russia um, uh, conference, it's, it's a good sign that things are improving and it's a good opportunity also for the group if we are able to participate in Division 8 day. Sandra, you said a full day for Division 8? Yeah, the idea is for the divisions that um, we have the, the board meeting last week and for the divisions that uh, confirm already, so I confirm for Division 8, uh, we'll have a parallel um, you know, each division will have, but it will be one full day for a division. So we'll be able to get a good slot for us there. Okay, it's good to know. Um, any other thing before we, we close the session? If not, uh, I just want to, before thanking everybody for being here, I uh, just want to say that there will be elections coming. Um, we have to elect the new, the new board, the new coordinators. Uh, we, are, we are running for this new term, the entire group, the regional structure and the, the officers are running for the next term. We, we will tell you shortly how to how we are, we are planning the elections since usually we elect uh, representatives or coordinators in physical meetings, but since we won't have one, so, so soon we'll, we'll have an alternative way of deciding uh, who's, who's going to, I mean, the, the entire process, not just, um, we are, I mean, we are running, but we, we want other 
people to run it, it's their, their will. So we want to make this open and democratic. So we have to establish a process that allows everybody to, to present their proposals and the a final voting that will decide who's going to be in charge of the group for the next two years. Hopefully in two years, we'll have a physical meeting where we can elect the, the coordinators for the, the following term. Until then, we all, we, we'll, we'll have to, to survive with these alternative ways of, of doing things, which is not, I mean, necessarily bad, but it's, it's different. Even if we are getting used to it, it's not, it's not the same thing. So this was uh, this announcement I wanted to make to, to uh, you, you will receive information about this election process soon. I will ask you also to, to respond to the survey that will be open for one or two more months. And there, there will be the next webinar that Kevin is organizing will be, um, Okay, thanks, Sandra. <laughs> the 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 coming the next webinar Kevin is organizing is planned for early January. It's still in in progress. Uh, it will be about uh, a topic that is new for most of us, but it's relevant in terms of spatial ecology. And um, so. I will. I mean, we will announce it uh, as soon as as possible. And that will be the sixth webinar. And hopefully some, someday we can, we can replace the webinars with other sort of meetings. But until then, I think this is a, a, a great uh, solution. It's a great way of sharing knowledge and meeting with, with people. Um, so these are the final announcements that I have for, for today. To finish the session, I would like to, to thank you all for being been here and resisting for one, one hour and a half. I think this was an important webinar because 30 years, it's not every year that you celebrate 30 years of, of uh, an organization. And it's not just 30 years, it's 30 years of active work and involvement of many people and hard work. So it's, it's something special. It's just not a simple celebration, it's a celebration of something that we all, we all care about. And so thank you all for being here, for your contributions over the years, to our, your contributions to this particular session. And hope to see you soon, either in a webinar or, or physically. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you, Joao. Bye-bye. Thank you for organizing. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Joao.